For all my life, people have asked me, Rishi, why are you a vegetarian? Why don't you eat meat? Why can't we head down to KFC and grab a bite together? Now, my answer always had three components. It's not good for the environment, the treatment of animals is far from ethical, and frankly speaking, I've never eaten meat, so I don't really miss it. Anyway, as of right now, your average person consumes about 42 kilograms of meat every year, while raising livestock consumes about 23% of all global water. The livestock live in confined areas with barely enough space to move around, minimal food and water, and are forced to consume massive amounts of steroids just to boost their muscle quantity. Now, to give you a better picture of what's going on, the factory farming industry is literally, and I mean literally, killing the earth. If you don't believe me, well, that's fine. <laughs> the United Nations has literally named, recently named, meat the world's most urgent problem. Over 800 million people could be relieved of starvation if all the, if all the grain that was going uh, towards livestock was simply given to humans. Just think about that. 800 million people. Now, the statistics are unbelievable, yet they're true. If all that grain was going towards human consumption instead, our world hunger problem would be dramatically reduced. So the ultimate solution to this is, is also the most obvious solution, to stop eating meat. So, vegetarianism? Now, although ideal, this solution is, I'm sorry to say, unachievable, unrealistic, and far too optimistic. Let's be real. It is far from likely that we, as a society, are significantly going to decrease our meat consumption. I mean, who of you really want to give, give up those double beef burgers, right? Which is, and that's why I'm here today, to offer a better, faster, and more effective solution. To counteract the ethical and environmental disaster we face every day. To battle our meaty problem with meat. More specifically, clean meat. Sounds simple, right? Well, not so much. See, clean meat is revolutionary and groundbreaking technology that is destined to transform the global food industry. Now, let me get a little bit sciencey for a second so you actually understand what's going on. During the production of clean meat, stem cells composed of muscle and fat cells are taken from the animal. The muscle cells, essentially the meat that most of you eat, are put into the ideal environment. Now, this environment is literally emulating what's happening in the animal itself. So the muscle cells almost feel like they're still in the animal. Now, in this ideal environment, the muscle cells will reproduce. And that's it. You have meat. Now, did any of you catch any artificial drugs, unnatural processes, or unpronounceable chemicals? Exactly. And this is what people need to understand urgently. And I can't stress this urgency enough. Clean meat is natural. It is a representation to, of what happens to over 150 million livestock every day. Instead, however, the millions of liters of water and acres of land unforgivingly taken for the production of meat can be dramatically reduced. Which brings me to my next point. Clean meat is far more ethical. We're essentially fast-forwarding the process of having to raise, feed, and then slaughter an animal, and instead, getting straight to the meat. See, clean meat is minimizing the notorious torture of livestock that is so prevalent in today's food society. See, clean meat is what I believe is one of the most sustainable and viable solutions to the ethical and environmental disaster we face every day. Now, it isn't a matter of why or even how. It's a matter of when. When are we going to adopt what the technology offers us? When are we going to make a change in our own livelihoods to make the world we live in a better place? Now, as I talk to you, I feel like I've kind of edged you towards having maybe an even, open, maybe an even more open mind about clean meat. Yet, no matter how great a solution it may be, there are without a doubt certain drawbacks, certain limitations that clean meat brings with it. One of these is that clean meat demands an economic shift. Now, the factory farming industry is massive and circulates billions of dollars every year. Now, in the, in the United States alone, about 2% of the population, a bit under 5 million people, is directly involved with factory farming. 
Now, meat powerhouses like Brazil and the United States are heavily reliant on the production of meat for the sustainability of millions of their citizens. So, of course, it's not fair to just take away their source of income, right? No matter, clean meat will indisputably create jobs in the market. More jobs only means an increase in the popularity and the recognition of clean meat as not only a solution, but a development towards a cleaner future. Now, there is one more factor that I would like to discuss. And in my opinion, this is the most important factor. Who, as of now, is willing to eat clean meat? Who, as of now, is willing to go to the supermarket, see a package labeled clean meat, and actually buy it? Now, the only way to answer this question is to actually ask people. So that's what I did. I split my data sample of about 40 people into two main groups, meat eaters and non-meat eaters. And I asked them one simple question. Would you be willing to eat clean meat? Now, to be completely honest, I wasn't really sure what to expect. However, the data is what matters, and the data is distinct. Simply put, the meat eaters are at a minimum willing to try clean meat, whereas the non-meat eaters aren't really inclined to do so. Now, you may be thinking, you know, all these vegetarians are just a bunch of narrow-minded people. But really, they've already solved the problem. They've stopped eating meat. They're contributing to the solution that clean meat is trying to solve. So really, the target market for clean meat is meat eaters, those that are trying to make a change in their own livelihoods, those that are trying to develop into this environmentally and ethically sustainable option. Now, as I speak of sustainable options and alternative alternatives to meat, ventures like Beyond, Burger and the Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burger may ring a bell. Similar to clean meat, Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burger are dedicated to solving the problems we face as a society. However, as opposed to clean meat, they are made from plant-based substances. The quote-unquote meat is made from plant-based substances. Clean meat, on the other hand, is real meat. Let me repeat that. Clean meat is real meat. Now, this doesn't mean that these two are bad. It just means that clean meat is solving the problems in a much more, in a much more appealing way, in a much more effective way. Now, about eight or nine minutes into the TED Talk, it's pretty easy to forget, wait, what's, the, what's even the point of clean meat? Why do we need to rapidly adopt clean meat? Now, whether it's the devastating effect of factory farming on the environment or the tremendously unjust treatment of the animals, it is time that we remodel the shape of a food industry that has remained the same for far too long. Seriously, it is time that we make a change. It is time that we take a risk, move past our constraints, and embrace a solution that has already presented itself to us. It is time that we make the move towards clean meat. Thank you.